What should you expect when going through chemotherapy? So this is a video I've wanted to make for quite a while now. Um, I wanted to talk about the side effects of chemotherapy. I mean, there's a few common ones that people know about, but um, I wanted to kind of cover as many as I can. Um, I've got 20 to get through, so I'm gonna try and keep it short. Before I start, I just wanna say, um, depending on what type of chemotherapy you're having, um, the side effects can differ. What I'm going to cover today are the ones that I experienced and the most common ones that people do get regardless of what type of treatment they're having. So first one is hair loss. This is commonly known um, that when people are having chemotherapy, their hair tends to fall out. Um, I lost all of my hair, um, and I mean all of it from all over my body. Um, it all slowly started to fall out, uh, and I eventually ended up just shaving my hair off. Uh, I tried to hang on to what little I could, um, but it was pretty much all gone to be fair. When I do edit this video, I'll put up a picture here uh, just so you guys can see what I look like with no hair. Number two is nausea. You get very, very nauseous when you're having chemotherapy. Um, you get a very sick in the stomach kind of feeling and it's kind of constant. It does come and go and you have bouts that are worse than others, but um, it is kind of always there. Uh, it's quite annoying as well. It's not a nice feeling. And that links me on to number three, which is vomiting. Uh, people tend to vomit when having chemotherapy. I personally didn't, I forced myself to stop. Every time I kind of felt like I needed to vomit, um, I kind of stopped myself. I just thought if I vomit once, I'm always gonna vomit. So I was like, I'm not doing it. So every time I felt like I needed to puke, I kind of just held it in and stopped it coming out. Um, but when I was having my chemotherapy, so when I was in hospital and um, they were giving me the drugs, um, I remember there was one point where there was a guy there, he was quite, quite new to chemo. I think it was his first or second session and he bought a little packed lunch with him as most people did. Um, but it was a rookie mistake where he kind of ate just before having chemotherapy. And I remember he was sitting like two chairs away from me, just literally throwing it all up throughout his whole um, treatment session. So yeah, vomiting is a big, big side effect that people do experience and it's, it's just really not nice. Number four is fatigue and breathlessness. Um, you get very, very tired when you're having chemotherapy. Uh, it just literally sucks the life out of you. When I say fatigue, I don't just mean how like people are tired on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean proper fatigue to the point where you just don't even want to move. Um, in terms of the breathlessness, um, you kind of just get out of breath doing the most minor tasks. I mean, I remember I used to come into the sitting room, for example, and sit down on my sofa and I'd be tired just walking from where I was just to the sofa to sit down. Um, Things like going up the stairs and things like that, they can, they can get you kind of out of breath quite a lot. Um, so you might experience a breathlessness or a shortness of breath. Number five is a sore mouth. Um, chemotherapy gives you a very, very sore mouth. I remember my, my gums used to feel like they were on fire, like a really, I can't explain it, like an electric type feeling. Very tingly, very burning. I also got a lot of ulcers in my mouth, um, which again uh, is very common. Uh, when you have chemotherapy um, and your mouth does get painful, you do get ulcers and it can be quite painful. I remember um, even just drinking water used to sting my mouth so badly. Um, so you can't really do anything about it. Uh, you kind of just got to ride it out. Number six is a loss of appetite. Um, when you're going through chemotherapy, it's very, very normal to not feel like eating. Um, it's probably linked to everything else that's going on um, in terms of like having a sore mouth and feeling sick and that sort of thing. Um, for me personally, my throat used to close up. Um, I remember I used to take uh, tablets and it used to take me ages just to swallow these pills because my throat was just closed up the whole time. So when you can't even swallow water or you can't swallow pills, it's very hard to swallow food. Um, and it kind of makes you not want to eat. And on top of that, you kind of just don't feel like eating. You don't feel like doing anything, to be honest. The annoying thing for me was I love food and I love eating. And when something is stopping me doing that, it's very, very frustrating. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because you need to eat in order for your body to be strong enough to fight what's happening to it but then you can't eat because of the poison they're putting in you. It's just a, it's a lose-lose situation, to be fair. You kind of just have to force yourself to get those meals down. Number seven is skin and nail changes. Um, when you're going through chemotherapy, your skin and your nails will change. Uh, my skin went very kind of like pale and lifeless. It kind of just looked like I was a bit dead, to be honest. Um, it just kind of I was breaking out with um, spots and things like that because obviously the chemotherapy is so 
um, toxic and it is so acidic to your body, um, you might get breakouts. So I remember I used to get dry skin a lot. Um, in terms of nails, um, the nails on your hands and feet will start going black. They will slowly start going black and towards like the halfway point of um, your treatment, well, in my case anyway, um, my nails were completely black and they stayed that way until I finished treatment. And even after I finished treatment, it took a while for them to kind of grow out and come back to normal. So just bear in mind, your nails will go black. The next one is anemia. Um, a lot of chemotherapy tends to lower the red blood cells in your body. And therefore you can become anemic. And with anemia comes fatigue um, and all of that. So it kind of goes hand in hand, which again leads me on to my next one, which is number nine, bruising and bleeding. When you're having chemotherapy, you have lower platelets in your blood. Um, platelets are these things that kind of, when you have a cut or something is bleeding, they rush to the scene and they kind of help mend it and they stop the bleeding and then they create a scar or a scab um, and then they, the healing process starts. When you don't have enough of those in your blood, when you do bleed, uh, your body can't really stop it effectively. So you might find that you um, bruise a lot more easily or you might um, experience things like nosebleeds and stuff more frequently. Or if you do happen to cut yourself on something, um, it might just be a little bit harder to stop the bleeding. Halfway point, number 10. Uh, number 10, we have infections. Uh, when you are having chemotherapy, your immune system is pretty much non-existent. Um, chemotherapy destroys everything in your body, good and bad. Um, so it's also kind of killed off your immune system. And when it's done that, you are a lot more susceptible to infections and getting sick. Um, so you just have to be very, very careful. I remember I used to do things like I'd have separate towels for myself in the house, so I wouldn't use the same towels as anyone else because they can carry a lot of germs. Um, I used to try and stay away from places which were high in bacteria, such as like public places mainly, like um, using the trains or gyms and things like that. Um, I kind of just stayed in my own little bubble trying to protect myself. Luckily, I didn't get anything, um, but a lot of people do get sick or have an infection when they're going through chemotherapy, so just be careful. Number 11 is one that not many people touch upon, and that's the emotional issues that come along with uh, chemotherapy. Now, when you're having chemotherapy, you're going to experience pretty much every single emotion under the sun. You'll be happy, sad, you'll want to uh, scream, you want to cry, you want to laugh, you want to, you want to, like, everything will happen, literally. Um, two of the most common um, issues related to chemotherapy are anxiety and depression. And I know in the society we live in today, this is something that a lot of people do suffer from, and it's a thing that not many people talk about still. Um, but they are two of the most common side effects of chemotherapy. Um, so if you do start feeling those, I mean, try not to worry too much. It is just a side effect and it will pass, um, but it, it can be difficult to deal with. Um, and it's always good to have a strong support circle around you or seek therapy if you do need it, or just speak to someone. I mean, these are things that will go in, in on in your head, sorry. And sometimes it's hard to put them into words, but um, if you do try to, I mean, it can help. There's loads of different avenues you can go down, but if, if it is something you do experience, try not to keep it to yourself. I mean, it can drive you mental, so um, maybe try and speak to someone about that. But like I said, don't feel like, oh, why am I feeling like this? It, it, it's completely normal, and I promise you it will pass. Number 12 is weight gain or weight loss. When you're having chemotherapy, um, you may experience one or the other, or even both. Um, a lot of people tend to lose weight during chemo because, um, like I mentioned before, it's a lot harder to eat. Um, so when people aren't eating enough, they do tend to lose weight. Um, I experienced the opposite. I gained a lot of weight, um, mainly because I was on steroids. When you're having chemotherapy, in order to help keep your body strong um, to fight it, uh, most hospitals will prescribe you with steroids. And when you consume steroids, you're likely to gain weight. Um, so I did, I got, I got quite chubby during uh, chemotherapy, to be honest. I put on a lot of weight, um, which then took me ages to shift after, but that's, that's a whole different story. But if you do experience weight gain or loss, again, it's completely normal. Number 13 is issues with digestion. Um, when you're having chemotherapy, your digestive system pretty much doesn't work. It almost comes to a standstill. Um, so when that happens, you kind of do get more stomach issues, you do get more digestive problems. Um, I personally suffered from constipation very badly. Um, I have heard of people suffering from diarrhea as well. This didn't really happen to me. Mine was the opposite again. It just felt like whatever I was eating, my body could not process it. I tried to keep myself on a diet which kind of 
were foods that were very easy to digest, but even the most easy to digest foods are still hard to break down for your body when going through chemotherapy. So you will suffer from these. Um, so don't be alarmed again, it's just something that we kind of have to ride out. Number 14, and I laugh about this now, but it's the memory and cognitive issues that come with chemotherapy. And yes, I'm talking about chemo brain. So if you followed any of my vlogs whilst I was having chemotherapy or you've seen any of them, um, you probably would have noticed uh, me mentioning something called chemo brain quite a lot. Um, which, like I said, now I laugh about it. At the time, it's very, very frustrating. Chemo brain, the best way I can describe it is your brain just doesn't function as well as it normally does. Um, you tend to forget things. Uh, you'll be very slow to react to things. Uh, someone might be speaking to you and you'll kind of just lose focus and drift off thinking about whatever. Um, I remember there were times I'd literally walk into a room to get something. I'd get there, walk in and bang, I've forgotten what I was in there for. Um, it used to happen to me so much and then I'd kind of just go back downstairs or wherever I was and wait until it comes back to me. Um, but you do get a lot of like forgetfulness and things like that. Um, so chemo brain, I mean, there's loads, there's loads about it. If you Google it, you'll find so much information, um, but it's very common. And like I said, it's funny afterwards, but it can be frustrating at the time. Um, don't beat yourself up about it. It happens to us all. So number 15 is sleep issues. You may have trouble sleeping or you might find yourself sleeping when you don't want to. There's times at night where you just want to go to sleep because you're so shattered from everything, um, but your brain just won't switch off and you just won't be able to sleep. You'll just be tossing and turning. And the opposite happens when I remember there'll be times I'm just sitting on the sofa watching TV and I'll just drift off. Um, I mean, just let your body sleep when it wants to is the best thing I can say. If you happen to doze off in the day, just take that nap. If you can't sleep at night, don't stress out, do whatever. I used to watch TV a lot. I just used to watch TV and when I fall asleep, I fall asleep. To be fair, most people when they're having chemotherapy aren't working and your, kind of, your life is kind of at a standstill and everything's paused. So there's, if you can't sleep at night, you can sleep during the day, for example. Um, don't stress about it too much, just sleep as much as you can. Number 16 is nerve damage. Um, it's not something that happens with chemotherapy, but long term it can. Um, I'm kind of just covering the short term effect. So when I talk about nerve damage, I don't mean the actual damage itself, but what happens is you get these kind of tingly feelings, um, mainly on your toes and your fingers, um, where it kind of just feels like pins and needles. And it will happen randomly and it can last for as long as it wants to. Um, and it's really weird. You kind of lose feeling in your fingers, but you get this weird sensation instead. When I say nerve damage, I mean long term. Um, there have been cases where people have had uh, long term nerve damage and they've kind of lost feeling in their fingers and things like that. Um, but you won't know that till later on. And it's not as common as people think. Um, but short term, yes, when you are having chemotherapy, it does happen. Almost there now. Number 17 is hearing. So you might have issues with your hearing. I remember my ears used to get very painful and um, it just felt like they were blocked with something. It was a really weird feeling. So your hearing kind of isn't as great, but I also used to get really painful ears. Um, so you might experience something similar. Number 18 is chemo cough. Um, anyone who's been through chemotherapy is probably familiar with this. Um, but for some reason, when you're having chemotherapy, you tend to cough quite a bit. I think it's because of obviously the drugs having an effect on your lungs and if you've got an infection and your body's trying to fight it or your body sees this as something bad and it creates more phlegm and things like that. Um, there could be a number of reasons, but um, we all have this one thing in common, which is the chemo cough. Last two now, number 19 is dizziness and disorientation. I remember there were times where you'd kind of just you might be standing, sitting, walking, you might stand up, you might just sit down. Whatever the case is, you might just get a bit dizzy or a bit disoriented. You might be like, well, hold on, where am I again? That sort of thing. Um, again, it's not something to be alarmed about. If you do get dizzy, just try and not fall over. Hold on to something, sit down, do whatever you have to. Um, it's not really, really bad. Well, my, in my experience, it wasn't really bad. I'm sure some people have had it worse. Um, but again, it is a side effect that you may experience. And last but not least, number 20, body aches and pains. My body was aching throughout chemotherapy so badly. It just felt like pretty much every single muscle, every single joint, every bone, everything inside me was in pain. Uh, I wouldn't say it was like a sharp pain or a blunt pain. I can't, it's not a pain I can describe, it was just really achy. Um, I remember my mum used to massage my feet quite a lot. My feet used to get so painful when uh, Every night when she'd come home from work, I'd kind of just lie there and let her kind of rub my feet and it was the best feeling in the world. 
Um, but I'd say, yeah, my feet were probably the worst. I kind of tried to keep active um, throughout chemotherapy, so I used to go for walks every day, so that might have contributed to it. But apart from the feet, I mean, literally everything. There, there's times you're just lying there, and your legs are hurting, your arms are hurting, your back, your shoulders, like literally everything. So you will suffer from aches and pains. Um, I mean, just try and manage it as much as you can. If, if you do happen to have a mother-like mind, um, and she's happy to rub your feet, by all means get her to do so. Um, it's the one time where you can ask people for a foot rub and they can't really say no. Um, so make the most of it, but um, it, is, it isn't nice, but it's, it's something that comes along with it. So there we have it guys, those were the 20 side effects of chemotherapy that I think are the most common and people will suffer from. And a lot of them, like I said, I suffered from myself. Um, I hope you found this video um, helpful and very informational. Um, I tried to keep it as short as possible. I did kind of try and skip through each one as fast as I could just because there were so many to cover. Um, so if there are any you want to know more about um, in particular, um, just either drop me a message, leave a comment below um, and I'll get back to you. If there are any that I haven't covered that you've experienced yourself, um, please comment below and let me know. I'm always happy to learn and find out new things. So um, I'd be very interested to know which ones I I might not have had myself, but other people kind of go through. Um, so please do let me know. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. And go and follow me on Instagram. It's at DNA Fitness UK. I try and post on there as regularly as I can. And it's a good place to kind of get uh, more frequent updates on me and how I'm kind of getting on with things. Um, so yeah, give me a follow on there as well if you haven't. And once again, thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.